And this new Turtle Beach headset released two months ago, being the Turtle Beach Atlas Air wireless gaming headset, when I reviewed it, I stated, hands down, the most cozy gaming headset I have ever worn. And at the end of the video, I highly recommended it. 110%, I highly recommend it. And I said I would continue using this headset. I'm going to continue using it. Is this headset or this product still living up to the words I stated in my first review? So hopefully this kind of content is helpful and really beneficial for you. And if it is, please consider subscribing. And I have to kick it off with comfort as I do in all of my headset reviews, but most importantly, because I stated it was the most comfortable gaming headset I've ever worn in my standalone review. And this headset, first off, it is incredibly lightweight. Like my goodness, it is so lightweight, which will play into the build, which I'll talk about after the comfort here. And looking at the ear pads, like my gosh, this thing is plush they are big they are silky so they stay cool and breathable your ears don't touch the drivers you don't get pinched if you wear glasses these ear pads are phenomenal and that goes right into the headband you see you got that floating headband design which actually adjusts by the elastic and velcro on the inside there but it just floats right up there you don't even feel it on your head me with a bald head that's very nice i mean this headband is perfect now i want to roll right into the build because a lot of the build of this headset goes right in line with the comfort of this headset. Again, talking about it being lightweight, yes, it is all plastic, but I don't get worried about this headset one bit. Like, holy smokes, just look at that. Like, I don't get worried about it at all. And I stated in so many videos, I will take a lightweight plastic headset over a heavy duty metal headset or headphone. Because again, we all want to game for longer sessions without the fatigue. But again, if that plastic is done right, right here it's not super firm or anything but it's so flexible i don't get worried about it one bit now the other cool thing about this headset are the ear cups here it's the first one with the floating design they got these little rubber bands right there and in my review that was one of my concerns like will those rubber bands kind of dry out and then you know will our headset be done by then I, I don't know that is still a concern of mine but i'll tell you right now with all of my taking on turning off you know, stretching them out and stuff. Nothing's happened. I live in a hot, humid climate. So when we compile all that together, talking about the floating headband designs, uh, the headband, the ear cups here, the ear pads, and again, no pressure whatsoever. And it's a combination of everything. That flexible build, the floating ear cups there with the rubber bands, the headband, everything from the build in the comfort meshes together into hands down the most stinking cozy headset still to this day I have ever worn. Now let's go ahead and talk about features and functions of the Atlas Air headset. And while I'm talking about this, you're going to be hearing this microphone straight up plugged and played. You can see the graph rolling right there. No tweaking or anything. This is just straight up the microphone. And it does include this windscreen, which is really nice for someone like me with P's and T's. And it just kind of mutes out some of the extra sound. Um, by the way, I'm not going to be filming any more of my videos over in the studio. I'm going to be shooting them in my game room. It just feels a little bit more raw. And talking about raw well i have just about no sound dampening i got some pictures hanging up i have stuff in here so it's like a regular room tv couch so on and so forth so i got that kind of muting but i got a fan running right now you're here my pc chug right down there i actually got a fan in this light i have right over here as well so just talking about some of that sound again compared to a studio to a basic room this is what it's going to sound like here. Now, we'll state one downfall about this microphone, in my opinion at least, is that it's kind of right in my face. I got it bent down a little bit here, but if it was just straight up, like right here going straight, it's like right in my vision, which that drives me nuts. I can't stand it. I wish it went down a little bit more. So what I find myself doing is just bending it down and it kind of curls down, but I wish it was down here by my chin. But I know what they're doing. They're helping people get it right in front of their mouth. So again, you get that best audio. It is also flip up. bring it back down and it is active again. And by the way, you get a tone in the headset whenever you mute it or pull it down. Same with the volume, you get tones in the headset for everything. Now, one other thing about features and functions before I show you some of the software is this headset does have Bluetooth, but unfortunately it's not simultaneous Bluetooth. And I say unfortunately lightly, I used to be someone that swore by simultaneous Bluetooth. I used to rag headsets that didn't have simultaneous Bluetooth, right? I play a lot of story games, PVE, and I just love dialogue and hearing the environment. That's what audio gets me wrapped up into those games, you know? So I don't catch myself playing music in the background or listening to videos. Maybe if I was playing like massive Call of Duty like I used to or some racing games, 
and it's just repetitive, then I'd like to throw some uh, music on in the background. But if not, I'm just going to throw a vinyl on over here and I'll be perfectly fine, you know. But anyways, what I need Bluetooth for is to catch a call with my son being in school or I don't want to miss that emergency or something. And I can still get that with this. When I'm playing my game, I get a call. It'll come right to the headset, start ringing in here. I can pick it up with it, hang it up on it. And once I hang it up, it goes right back to my previous setting, being the 2.4 on the wireless mode, unless, of course, you're in Bluetooth. So, yes, you can still get your important calls, which is priority to me. But, no, you cannot play your music and listen to your game at the same time. It is Bluetooth or 2.4. But what I want to do is swing around here, and let's go on and pull up the Swarm to software and then we're going to click on our atlas air now everything i'm showing you in here can also be controlled well i don't think everything i'm not sure the waves 3d and stuff like that but a lot of the stuff can be controlled on your phone within an app as well but anyways number one over here you got your master volume your audio which can also be controlled on that wheel on the side of the headset there as you see it adjusting you got superhuman hearing not my favorite thing you all know i'm not a big superhuman fan it just tweaks the sound a bit game to chat you can adjust it in here to the g to the c over here you got chat boost waves 3d again another sound morphing thing not my favorite and then you got high bandwidth audio over here you got your microphone settings as far as mute which you can also flip it up sensitivity mic monitoring i mentioned this in my review like once you come down here towards like 60 yeah it's pretty much cut off now like it might as well be at zero you got to pretty much be anywhere around i would say I'm starting here a little bit, definitely 80s to 90s, and you start hearing that mic monitoring quite a bit. You're not yelling in your headset by any means, but you do hear yourself. If I come up to 100 here, it's still pretty manageable. Again, I'm not screaming in my headset from my microphone. I just hear it, but it is a little bit airy. Just letting you know that the mic monitoring does sound a little bit airy there. Come down here to noise gate. We'll try, we'll try that out. So right here, I'm clicking noise gate. If I clap in front of us or snap in front of us, you can hear that. And you know what? Let's turn that off. And one thing, let me test this one more time with you guys. So turning this on, 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 off, off, off. Okay, so whenever you hit noise gate on, it actually turns mic monitoring off. So uh, if you got a noisy environment and you are one to use noise gate, you're not going to be able to use mic monitoring. Interesting. I just found that out right here as well. A high bandwidth microphone, which this also has to be adjusted down in your settings of your PC when you're doing that. Coming down further, you have the EQs. As I talked about, it, I'm not a superhuman fan. I'm not a Wave 3D fan or 7.1, anything like that. But I do dabble with an EQ now and then. And this is a little bit of a stinker because you see the EQ. Um, you got the presets, signature sound, bass boost, treble boost, uh, treble in bass, and the vocal boost, which is pretty much highs, bass, and then both. Anyways, on the app, I do have a custom EQ that I was dabbling with, kind of really just my, you know, standard smiley curve. As you all know, this is pretty much what I always prefer to get a little bit of bass out there, get the mids kind of rounding out. Back when I used to play FPS, the bass and the mids would definitely be down a lot more and would peak up here more. But now that I play a lot more story games and such, I do like a little bit more body in there. But this is pretty much what I use. But anyways, my point is, if I set this here, it will not save any app. And if I set one in the app, it will not save over here. That's a little bit of a stinker. I, I kind of wish it saved to the headset and then saved on whichever device you were on. So you got that EQ that goes along with you. Same goes over with the mic. Again, it's set flat, only saves here. But you got some other options, signature sound, which is what you've been here. Smooth. This is a smooth microphone here, which again, you get tones in the headset. We'll get over here to full, which is going to pull out some more bass, as you can see. And then back to signature sound. And over here on game, which we'll talk about here in the audio coming after features and functions, even though I talked about the EQs and it's kind of a stinker, well, believe it or not, I pretty much always preferred mine on Turtle Beach signature sound. We'll talk more about that in the sound department. But scrolling down further, here's your basic settings of the headset. Voice prompts or tones that I've been telling you you get. You can set that higher or lower off if you want. Auto shut off the LED brightness. And by the way, now that I got it off, it is off. The LED on the dongle is not blinking. But if I turn this headset off, that darn dongle blinks like crazy. So as far as features and functions and the software that we're just taking a look at there, it's simple. It does everything you need. But again, a little bit of a downfall here as no product's perfect, right? So we got to 
call out the flaws as well. One thing I wish Turtle Beach would have done, and I believe they did it on, oh, it's all the way back there. It's the second one back, the Turtle Beach Stealth Pros back there. And you could actually customize the button and then the dial and stuff. And I think they could have done that here. Like you got your volume wheel over here. Well, why not this side? Make this a custom volume wheel where you can adjust your microphone level or your game to chat or something like that, something that you can adjust in the software and customize this other dial for. I feel like that's a missed opportunity, and that would have been so darn cool. But again, as it is, it is still doing everything I want. I just think it could have been made a little bit better. Okay, so now let's talk about one of the most important things with any audio gear that you're listening to being sound, right? And talking about the sound of this headset being the first open back wireless gaming headset, you all know me, I'm not a massive open back fan, even though, heck, straight front and center, I have an open back right there, the Sennheisers, you know. I believe, no, I got the Corsairs as well. Those are the only two open backs I have up there. And again, no, I'm not a big fan of open back headphones, mainly because when I game, I want to get locked in and immersed, and I don't want to hear, you know, my dog barking or whatever's going on outside of the game room right out there, you know. I want my sound to be locked in, and I want that fuller, impactful sound. Open backs, again, people say they're better for FPS. Well, you're going to get sound coming in. Your sound's going to be coming out. If I'm blasting with my iFi stack over here at night, all of my sound's going out. sounds like speakers. And again, my family's like, yo, can you turn it down a touch, you know? So I was kind of iffy about that here. But with these, it's not really as open as, say, an open back pair of headphones that we're all used to, you know? They are still very breathable. So as far as temperature... You can wear them all day long. Your ears are not going to get spicy. And it's pretty darn hot down south here, you know. But also with that sound, it's not completely closed in like I stated I liked. This headset is a little more full. It's not bass heavy. It's not muddy by any means. It's not rumbly. It's a really nice natural sound. In my video, I compared it and said it sounded like the Nova line, the SteelSeries Arctic Nova. And you all know I love the Nova Pros. I love the Nova 7s. It's really what you got right here, but with that open back design, so the sound breathes out a little bit more. With the Novas, if you crank up that bass quite a bit, that bass can get a little bit unpleasant at times. And this, again, it lets that sound kind of breathe out. When I say you get more environmental sound with this, well, you need multiple things to play with that, right? With the open back, and then again, the detail of the driver and that sound in there. And you do get detail in here, but I will tell you, with it being a little bit fuller, that sometimes uh, you can get, like with the dialogue and then, say, uh, intense situation coming on with Destiny or me playing the uh, First Descendants lately. Those are my two games, is Destiny and the First Descendants. Good night, am I absolutely hooked. But with those... Again, you can hear the difference of the weapons and the dialogue, but in a sticky situation sometimes that will kind of drown it out. It doesn't get muddy and the, the bass isn't overtaking the highs or anything like that, but I would say the bass and mids are more prominent, which is always with this headset. The bass and mids are always prominent, but you still got your highs that are doing what they need to do. They're not like non-existent by any mean. I'm just letting you know, like in sticky situations that yes, sometimes those bass and mids will be more prominent. But again, for me playing a PVE game, I really don't play many FPS, maybe a little bit of X Defiant here and there, a little bit of Halo, probably when the new Call of Duty, I'll, I'll give that a try. But the FPS grind is just repetitive and boring to me lately, right? I've been liking looter shooters and story games, you know, and this really does what I want. And if I want to dive into an FPS, whether it be X Defiant or something like that, it does that as well. Again, I'm not really competitive or anything, but it really suits it. It's not like, ah, man, let me go and get something else. I never catch that vibe with this headset here, like any story game or any... FPS game. I never catch myself like, nah, let me get something different. Let me get something better. It just does everything I need across every single game. And I really like that. So again, I can't speak too much on competitive FPS, but as far as core listening and that sound, I think it's a sound a lot of people are going to get down with. Not too much bass, not too much highs, kind of right here in the middle. Again, maybe a little bit of those mids can be drawn out. I leave mine on signature sound, so tweak yours as you like. And when you tweak it, you can hear that difference as well. But again, it is a really nice manageable sound across every kind of game. So let me answer that question that I mentioned in the beginning of the video. Does it still stand up to what I stated in my initial review? Well, I didn't watch that whole review over again, but I will tell you this. A couple things that stuck in my mind from that video is yes, I still hands down stand by 
This is the most comfortable wireless gaming headset I've ever put on my head. Probably the most comfortable headset in general, whether that be from headphones, wired, wireless, whatever. This is the most comfortable. And again, don't be worried about that build. It is incredibly solid. Now going into features and functions, as I stated, I do wish there were some tweaks. I feel like a missed opportunity here that they could have dabbled with that. But as far as not having a simultaneous, not a complaint. I'm perfectly fine with how it is. I just wish they would have utilized this side for another dial. That would have been really cool. It's $190. So it's not a cheap headset. And I think some people that look at this, and I think there was a comment in the video, so I'm like, oh man, it's built so cheap. Yeah, it's all plastic, the entire thing is. But as I said in the comfort, a lightweight gaming headset is going to be so much more beneficial than a heavy duty metal headset. The Odyssey Maxwell's, oh my gosh, those things are lofty. You can wear this nonstop with no issues. And that's why that build is like that. But it's also incredibly solid. It really is. And I think this headset is really going to shock a lot of people if you haven't tried it. And yes, I still 110% highly recommend the Turtle Beach Atlas Air. I will continue using this headset.